I um I don't listen to much Joe Rogan. I use no, I I wouldn't even say I used to. I'd say Tim Ferriss is probably more. I listen mm. to him more. Uh, Freakonomics. Okay. Malcolm Gladwell's podcast is really good. That's more informational, I suppose. Kind of, it's kind of like more like Freakonomics. It's stories, really. I see. Right. His okay. are more like this guy had nine fingers and he was able to change the world. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what was the missing finger? How did the missing finger help him? <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to play the music and then we'll just start the show. This okay. is going to be like the beginning of the show. All right. And then it's going to, the beat's going to drop. Episode 21, the ground up show. So as I mentioned before the show, I didn't, I don't have anything prepped for your intro. <laughs> uh, I wanted to troll so bad during the intro. Did too, you? Yeah. Well, you yeah. you were like sucking on your yeah. lozenge. <laughs> I think that's good <laughs> enough. Um, Jesse Earl, uh, good friend since like middle school. Since How like, since, like since, yesterday. Since, since yeah. yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We just met on the street and yeah. I was like, got to get this guy on the podcast. Um Web developer. What what is the technical speak of your web development knowledge and, and startup founder? Uh, sweat. So no longer sweat. So now it's pineapple metrics. Sure. But um, pineapple metrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good name. <laughs> I bet you came up with that because you're. I you're, did not come up with oh, that. Oh really? No, that's all Kevin. But yeah. your your name is your your other company name uh, is Little Big Berry. Little Big Berry. Yeah. You got, you got something with the yeah, fruit. Yeah, I have a fetish for fruit. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Welcome um, to my world. Yeah. Hydro. <laughs> hydro fruit. Hydro yeah. bananas. Hy- hydro. <laughs> So, uh, okay. So yeah, mm. well, you can tell me a little bit about the technical stuff because I know that I actually do have a few web developers that follow the show. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, so yeah, so we started this company, um, pineapple metrics. I met Kevin at our mutual good friend, Krista's wedding. Mm-hmm. And this motherfucker asked me like, Oh, you do iOS. Awesome. Yeah. Want to work for free for me for the next two years. Yeah. And here I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so the original idea, and so to bring it back to Sweat, the original idea was to basically put uh, tracking beacons on um, on weights, and it would sync with your phone. You just download the app, and you could you know lift without having to record anything because it would just autom you know automatically record it. Mm-hmm. And again, it's like these little beacons. You attach them to the weight. You because lift them. Everybody's right now. The the fitness tracking is really really popular. Nike. Sure, everybody's trying sure. to get into it. You got right. Fitbits. Um, and it, it's taken off mostly with the running and the biking and yep. the walking, but n- it's a lot easier to track. Yeah. yeah. But then there's been nothing done for these Correct. complex movements sure. that are part of weightlifting. Sure. And, and we failed at it because like, the technology <laughs> just wasn't, because it, it is actually really complicated. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so then we moved on to another thing called, uh, I forget what that one was called, but it, it was basically tracking the location of shopping carts as they move through a. That's right. A, a store. This, as in the industry, we call this a pivot. <laughs> right. right? No. It's a pivot. It's yeah. a pivot. And yeah, so we pivoted, and that was also extremely difficult. And and a lot of um, a lot of people uh, that we, you know, Morton Williams, and you know, just a bunch of these uh, Gracides. I mean, we kind of, you know, we talked to all these them. are New York City based grocery. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And um, they they saw. They understood how it could be a positive effect, but it was just like, ah, do we really need this? Like, mm-hmm. we know that we put the beer and the meat and the milk in the back corner of the store. We know that everybody's going to kind of, you know, migrate there because that's where everybody goes. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to migrate back. But it's like, well, wouldn't you like to know, like, where people are kind of standing? And it's kind of like when you go on Amazon and you have something in your cart, but you don't buy it. It's like we that's, could kind of provide yeah. that in real life. Um, but, yeah, it just it, it didn't really... It didn't pan out. It was extremely expensive. Um, you know, we were 3D printing baskets to put these sensors in. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't realize you guys were going oh, yeah. that route with it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just, it, I don't know, it, it, it failed. Um, so now, and it's, it's kind of amazing because it's, it's kind of amazing that this doesn't exist because, like, honestly, it's kind of like, I don't want to say dumb, but... Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little, it's a little dumb. It's, it's simple. Let's it's say simple. simple. Let's say simple. Minimalism. Let's say simple. Yeah, minimalism. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, it's basically you put, you put a survey on a counter. Yeah. And you ask one question, and that's it. 
And that's it. And it just sits there and it's like, how was your service today? What was the speed today? Do you like chocolate or strawberry? Um, do, you know, do you like vanilla or... <laughs> simple <laughs> yeah it's very simple but well, the, the one guy made a million dollars selling the, the pet rock right yeah exactly <laughs> yeah right, exactly jump to conclusions right. Matt. <laughs> um yeah so okay um, so then it's a at the end of a checkout aisle at like a yeah, or, or to be i mean it's we, we haven't really figured this out yet but yeah. we're getting a, a huge response rate so um if you look at something like starbucks you can kind of figure out that they get about 400 customers a day so the, the customers that we're working with we're getting something like in I think it was six weeks. We got 10,000 responses or something like that. And these are responses that, uh, you know, these owners of these companies would never get. Mm -hmm. Um, so surprising that people are actually leaving that feedback, Well, because it's so simple. So, you know, if you, if you go to an IHOP drunk one night, right. And they like circle, (laughs) as you do, (laughs) as you do, like when else do you go to IHOP? Yeah. Um, and you know, they circle like, Hey, if you had a really great experience, go to this website and fill out this survey and you could win $5,000 or whatever it is. Well, for us, it's just like, it's just there and you just tap the button and, you know, how was your experience? What was the speed? Do you like chocolate or straw? I mean, it's, it's very simple yeah. and it's just feedback that you would never get. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Um, so you're in a few different test stores and, and correct, locations yeah, and, yeah. and starting to get some yep. of this feedback. Correct. And then now I, I assume the big challenge is what do you do with this data and how yeah. do you actually help these companies? Exactly. So, so we're actually wondering, um, is it actually more important? Is it less important the fact that we're collecting this data and more important that we are analyzing the data ourselves and giving insights to the companies ourselves? So do we become more of a consultant at that point? Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what we're trying to work out. I think what's good about this and what's interesting and something I never thought of, but everybody's seems to always try to chase something like VR and, and even in a lot sure. of ways, like sweat w- was this kind of technology yep. that's not out yet, but you're trying to get to it first. Right. But maybe there's places in the market that are untouched and there's a way to use current technology sure. to provide a service or an experience that hasn't yet been provided. That's just missing. Yeah. And we're trying to figure that out too. Do we want to put these things on the counter while you're checking out, especially when, you know, someone's behind you. Do you really want to hit this? Maybe we want to put it uh, next to, if it's a coffee shop, maybe we want to put it next to the milk and the sugar and all that on your way out next to the toilet next maybe, <laughs> in the toilet, in the bathroom, maybe in the bathroom. No, that's insane. That's yeah. insane. That can't work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry. Yeah. Maybe We're taking this off track. Maybe not the bathroom. <laughs> um, how was your shit? Was great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is called brainstorming. This is how it's done. Shit storming. Yeah, shit storming. Um, that's really exciting though. It's, it's great to start to see that. Like, sure. It's, you're starting to get a response and you're starting to, that's the hardest thing I think is, is to actually gain trust of a company enough that they would be willing to bring, let you bring. Yeah. It's extremely difficult. And, and you know, you have companies where, you know, you have multiple points of leadership where one is like, um, I don't like the aesthetic of this. And the other piece of the leadership is like, well, I really want to collect this data. So it, it's very hard to sort of navigate Mm. that sort of thing um and yeah you know, exactly. i could see myself even out. on the side of of the aesthetics right and, and, and being who like, wants an ipad in front of their cash register right like yeah. it's already especially at a coffee shop it's already cluttered enough mm-hmm. so we're like contending with those sort of issues maybe we put in a, a, you know an a small phone or, or something maybe we make it smaller maybe we uh, again mount it on the garbage but now that's a whole different uh set of challenges because now we have to run power to it uh mm-hmm. we have to bolt it to the wall like yeah. it, like it's a lot of there's a lot of physical correct. like when when, yeah. when it's it's purely designing a digital product so um and you have jesse earl <laughs> to, to do everything for free <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh you're, you're good right. but when you actually have to to weld and, and you're in 50 100 stores sure. plus then you have to start yep. to figure out all right, how do we actually practically do yep. this with a team of two people yeah um, and, and, and also like, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the other things too is, you know, if we want to update the app that's actually in the store, uh, and imagine there's 200 and, you know, 70 stores, Ooh. how do you do that? How do you go about that? How do you do this without having to have someone on site updating this thing? I mean, it's, it's an extremely difficult and challenging task and, you know, so we're, we're using, uh, what are we using? Simple MDM, I think is what they're called. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So we're using, they were the easiest one, but you look at the other company, Jamf is another one. I think that's what Apple uses directly. They're affiliated with it. They are an absolute horrible experience. Like you, you can't even, um, begin to use their product unless you email them mm -hmm. and then they'll have a sales guy talk to you and then maybe they'll allow you to use their product. I mean, it's, it's insane. And I guess it's cause they're so deeply entrenched uh, with Apple. It's like, do they really care because yeah. they're doing all this MDM stuff? So MDM is a uh, mobile device management. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like if I want to uh, deploy a new version of my app and do it automatically, like not through the app store, not through someone touching the screen or anything like that. I just want to deploy it remotely myself. They are the ones that can help me facilitate doing this. Right. So, yeah. so it sounds like you guys have a lot of challenges yet to navigate, it's a lot of challenges, and it, yeah. but it sounds like you're also at a point where you can see this thing through for a little while. Oh, of course. Until, yeah. I mean, it's not like, cause those two pivots happened over what, two years or so. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yep. now how long have you been on this current, uh, uh probably the past I want to, yeah, I guess this past year. So yeah. since January. And this is something that I just talked about in two episodes ago mm. uh, with Ryder Carroll. He developed, it's called, I got it around here somewhere. Um, this system called the bullet journal. I don't know if you've heard of it, mm -mm. but it's an analog way to lay out um, and organize your journals. And it's like okay. amazing in terms of the structure to it. I guess right. he didn't realize it was a good idea until he started showing like one of his friends it and they're like, holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> like my awesome. journal is just insanely right, uh, right. cluttered and it's all over the place. But we were talking. Is this a physical product or a digital? So it, it, it is a physical product. Is it here? No, it's in the other room. Um, yeah. But uh, it's a physical. Nope. Here it is. <laughs> I've actually got it here. Okay. Uh, this is the bullet journal. And right. he actually told me before we started the show, he said, I just want to let you know, like, we can if you want to, but generally I've done these podcasts before and since it's mostly audio and like, even on the video, I wouldn't be able to show the actual journal. Sure. He's like, I can't really describe it because it's like, it's more, it's visual. It's more right. visual than anything. So if I right. try to describe it, it's going to be like, yeah, so you, you, the first page is just uh, numbers one to 10. Right, <laughs> right, it's, like, right. it's not really interesting. Sure. But um, so like basically it's like a moleskin journal. It looks like it. Yeah. And then you open it up and it's got. Which uh, is always aesthetically pleasing. That sort of. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that that's, he's a, he's a product designer um right right he's also like a simple living advocate he's got okay. a ted talk called uh, how to lead an intentional life mm -hmm. but so i guess there's like it's just a he, he turned it into a, a formula after he, he found out that people liked it so right. you actually have an index in the beginning of it and you okay. don't actually need to buy one of the bullet journals you sure. can go to you bullet, can make it yourself bulletjournal.com yeah. yeah. and then they have yeah they sh he shows you how to do it with sure. any, any notebook sure. but then it's like here's the index so then when you come back later on, right. you oh, know what it's on. Yeah, it's this is my favorite. Um, Isn't it the, the ones with the dots? Yeah, yeah. What is that called? It's called what? I don't know, I but know. I did it when we did Design Disruptors. I got these, yeah. this paper for yeah. it. I mean, so it's, I it's, like, yeah, it just it's, looks it, dope. Yeah. <laughs> it's just cool. And yeah. then I think there's there's like some other stuff in here to help you, like some mm. definitions and shit, but sure. I, I'm going to figure it out. Anyway, it's not really, this, this story isn't about the bullet journal, but more so sure. about our conversation about um, like the dip, Seth Godin, the dip. And no, oh, I don't, you know, no, no, Seth Jordan no. has a book called The Dip, okay. and it's essentially, uh, it's you know Seth Godin, he's like a, I know the name, yeah, he's like a marketing. Yeah. Uh, he's a, does like, he have a podcast as well? Or he doesn't, hmm. but he he's a he's basically one of the godfathers of modern marketing and internet okay. marketing. His okay. first book, Permission Marketing, mm -hmm. came out in the early two thousands. I want to say okay. And it was this, this whole concept of, you know, it was very prevalent, the idea of spamming people, especially email was new. So it was right. like, you get an email, you send them something. And okay. very similar to the analog of just, you know, snail mail, sending people uh, unsolicited Kind of what, I mean, that still happens now, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it still happens now. Spectrum and, internet. You fucking yeah. bastards. So his, yeah. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> and it, you know what I always wonder is like, who is giving my information out? Somebody's selling my shit. Yeah. Well, Spectrum only started sending me uh, after I filed my business with the little big. I get a lot of the business stuff too. Yeah. It's so annoying. So it's like I, whether it was signed up, I don't know who, how they got our address, but mm. maybe it's in some public directory or something. Right. 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 But uh, so Seth Godin came out with permission marketing and it was this idea that oh, you I have see. to first get permission from somebody. They have to right. opt in and say, I want to hear from mm -hmm. you. And then, uh, from there, 
you can send me stuff. Makes a lot of and sense. And if I, at some point, uh, change my mind and say, hey, I don't want to hear anything from you anymore, if I unsubscribe, then you have to stop. That's, right, the, right. The, the, that's how the relationship could go. Otherwise, um, you're abusing the relationship. Right. So he, he, he was, he's just a brilliant guy. <laughs> he's got a blog now. It's, I think it's called like Seth's blog. Right. But it's just these really pithy, short blog posts. But they're mm-hmm. always like to the point and make you, you think outside the box a little bit. He has a book called The Dip. And it's all about this idea, and it, it, it's it's basically like a, a a hill that goes up, this line that goes up, and it, that's when the, everything's going great. You're designing the logo, sure, you're doing yep. your your PHP or whatever you yeah, guys yeah. do on the, with the <laughs> codes PHP. and the numbers, <laughs> not PHP. your JavaScript. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so then you got to say JavaScripts, JavaScripts. Yeah, your JavaScript. I said that you just didn't hear it. Yeah, <laughs> no, okay. I, I did, totally. No, didn't. that makes you sound like an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just lost lost half right. the audience right there. <laughs> hey. Um, so yeah. it's going up cause it's exciting. It's fun. You're, you're doing everything that you love to do. Right. And then there gets a point where it's not fun anymore. You're not mm-hmm. seeing any results. You're not getting any success. Sure. And then you fall into the dip. Yeah. And that's where yeah. most businesses die. And he argues. So Vince Lombardi has got this quote, uh, about like quitters and how I like, quitters never win. I don't <laughs> know what the, 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 the saying is. Uh, Vince Lombardi or my mother? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. So he said, so basically, like, and in our culture, quitters are mm-hmm. are seen as this 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 terrible thing. Sure. And he made the point that a lot of times quitting is the best thing you can do. Mm-hmm. If, if maybe that idea was a terrible idea, and that's why it's not working. Right. But you do have to know. You do have to know when. Sure. Uh, and this is what Ryder said: whether the idea was bad or if you had a bad day. Right. And sometimes you have a bad day or you had a bad week sure. and then you can push through it. But, right. um, eventually you can come out the other side and, and, uh, mm-hmm. if, if you work hard enough and if the idea actually is good enough. Yeah. There's been a lot of dips. I mean, and <laughs> that's like, where you pivot, right? Like, yeah. I mean, dude, like I, I've started a lot of stuff yeah, that have, <laughs> I've started a lot of stuff that's, that's just died. I'm surprised. Sure. I'm actually kind of surprised this podcast is still going. <laughs> to be honest, like I never expected it. Well, if you enjoy, I mean, it's just conversations with people. I mean, it, it sounds. Here's what I'll say though: you don't realize how challenging something can be until you're in it. Sure. And yeah. a lot of times, oh, it's easy to speak into a microphone, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but like the setup that went into this is one thing, and then right. like getting the mics and all that stuff is one other. Sure. Setting up, but then to find the people that you want to interview Mm -hmm. and like my Rolodex is not that big. Sure. I mean, I'm talking to you (laughs) (laughs) now. My Rolodex isn't that big. So I have to reach out to, to, to a lot of people and and find friends of friends and see who wants to to come on the show. Right. And that requires, and you don't necessarily have this sort of prestige yet. Not at all. No, I mean it, the minimalism stuff helps a little bit, but I'm not reaching out to well-known people and I wouldn't be able to get well-known people at this point. Right. uh, Unless they saw minimalism, then I think that would help because I've certainly met some people that are like well-known that I'm like, Oh, if I wanted to, I could probably ask them to be on the show. But the challenge is having a conversation with you. Like we've had millions of conversations. (laughs) This is like, feels great. It's comfortable. Sure. Um, but when you're having conversations with people that you've just met, they've just come in this door in this apartment right. five, 10 minutes ago. Right. That's a real challenge right. to make them feel comfortable, mm-hmm. first of all. Right. Um, and then to be able to stimulate the conversation, lead it in the right way. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's an element there that I, there definitely is where I'm still learning and figuring out the best way to let a conversation naturally flow. Sure. And do, you, not, do, you, do you do the warm up thing too with them as well? Yeah, like where we were just hanging out, yeah. chilling and talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I would okay. never just like throw headphones. <laughs> like once they come downstairs, put headphones over yeah, their ears yeah, yeah, and say, "Let's yeah. go, let's do it." <laughs> right. I wanted to. I want to like, but then some of that natural conversation, sure, kind of goes away, which was great to have. I see. Right, um, right. It's almost like it would be good if we just went right into it. But right. at the same time, podcasting is is definitely there is a different element to it than actually having an actual conversation. Right. Sure. Uh, especially if it's something with somebody new. Right. So that all that to say that I am surprised. <laughs> like I always knew yeah. I wanted to keep going with the podcast and keep making yeah. episodes, but I just didn't know if I would continue to do it because I have quit with many other stuff early on and, and started projects and then let them die off. Right. There's a common theme. There's a name for it. I think it's called like podcast fatigue. And okay. most people don't get to 20 episodes. And that's the, the number. There's like a number there. It's and most, what number am I? 
This is 21. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, we did it. We broke it. Yeah, so so that this to me is a big milestone to get sure. to, to 21. Sure. Joe Rogan's coming up to like a thousand. Yeah, and I'm, I mean it's amazing. 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's incredible? amazing. It's unbelievable. What he's done in podcasting. This is when I started to. You look at Joe Rogan's podcast. You yeah. see, he 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 just talks to people. He just has conversations. Yeah, it's with great. People. And he also challenges. I mean, he like he said he challenges people. He yeah. What do you mean when you say that? Yeah. Uh, what? Why do you think that? I mean, it, but also in a way that it, I think is welcoming, and that it's sure. not necessarily. Sure. He's not out to get pe- like a gotcha. Right. He's not out to yeah, get people, at all. but he's out to no. actually understand and learn from sure. people. Sure. Sure. And if you're, what you're saying is not making sense, he's gonna call call you on it. Right. Right. But not. And like you're saying, not in a negative way, I yeah. guess. I mean, I, I heard when he had Steven Crowder on, it was... I, uh, I only watched the first part of it, like 30 minutes, but then I could okay. tell there was some contention yeah, there, there was in the very, beginning. It was very contentious because he's like, well, what do you mean by that? And that's kind of, you know, that's why I think he's so awesome to listen to. It can be a little bit cringeworthy because it's... If I was having a conversation with someone and calling them out like that, I might feel a little uncomfortable. To, to the point of what he's been able to build and accomplish sure is it seems simple on the surface he he, oh, he yeah. made a podcast yeah. Yeah. you ever see some of his early podcasts it's no just like, no I, I looked it up recently and it's just live like streams. episode one or two yeah or episode they? one or two it's, yeah. it's not there's no microphones it's just a computer and he's doing a live stream oh, and he's wow. like we're up we're up is this us we're, yeah. <laughs> and it's just him and his friend just shooting like Johnny shit. Bravo or something like that. I don't know who it was, yeah, but it no. was just him and his buddy, and they were no. just—they weren't even like there was no format, and like for the first ten minutes, I didn't even watch past ten minutes because they weren't even right. like talking about anything. Right. <laughs> they were just like, <laughs> looking at a camera and then having idle conversation. Sure, but I always thought I looked at his show and was like, I could do that. Right. I tend to do that a lot, and I, I think I did it more so when I was younger. I, like I, I could yeah. do that. Yeah, like you sure. watch a documentary, a film, I could do that. Right. I could make yeah. that. Yep. Then do it. Then right, go out right, there and right. actually try to make it because yeah. I don't think it's as easy as most no, people and think it, never, it is. Yeah, no, yeah. To have that kind yeah. of longevity to be able to, sure. to leading up to a thousand episodes. And that's just everything. I, yeah, I can make Facebook. Yeah, well, yeah. Could you? Could you support a billion users? Yeah. Like, could you do it? And what, yeah. would you want to too? <laughs> yeah. Would you want to? Would yeah. you want to have would, that responsibility? <laughs> right. Um, that political sway. That I mean, that's insane. Do I want that? No. No. I no. want. I want to hang out. <laughs> like, never, never. Never. Yeah. That's what I wondered too. I want to spout stupid shit and like have somebody who's much smarter than me correct me. That's yeah. like that. that, that yeah, is I kind of like that. Yeah. Here's the thing, and here's the thing about like hosting a podcast mm. and, and and starting to put my voice out there. Sure. And this is part of my life, I guess, is the fact that I, I always have a lot of doubt. But there are really brilliant people like right. Sam Harris and, and Jordan Peterson who are like they. You say a word and they're like got you fam and then right, they'll just right, talk right, for like an hour yeah. and they're, they're like super they're, interesting and, and it's almost edited the way that they speak is right. so well put that you it would take right. me to write that shit <laughs> right. over 24 hours right, to be able right. to be that good so part of me is like i have a lot of doubt and then i'm like fuck like i'm not that yeah i'm just a regular guy right that talks shit and gets corrected <laughs> right right so i mean this is actually really interesting that you're bringing that up so um my friend caitlin Again, the smartest person I think I've ever met. Mm-hmm. Um, she's just absolutely incredible. Her uh, shout wait, out to Caitlin. Yeah, you want to get a last name in there? Does she have a blog? No, no <laughs> she, she's too no. smart for a blog. Yeah, she's too smart. She doesn't have a Facebook. She doesn't have any of that. And wow. she, she's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Um, I wish her opinions were were more public. Why doesn't you should encourage her to? to I do. Write. I mean, yeah. well, she she would be an amazing comic. She would be an amazing. Really? podcast i mean she would be an amazing incredible. girlfriend <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but uh but uh so you're saying that she's uh she's really intelligent yeah so so when she listens to jordan peterson she's like that guy's a fucking idiot oh really yeah like just a complete fucking idiot he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about i've read literally every book that he's quoting and he is completely misquoting huh. everything that they're saying i mean it, it's just the perspective that she provides me is so interesting and it, and it's so antithetical to how I feel when I listen to Jordan Peterson, I'm like, Oh, this guy is mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Like this is great. Um, and then she provides a sort of, I, you know what, when I, sorry, when I listen to mm-hmm. Jordan Peterson though, it's different than Sam Harris, Sam Harris. I think he can speak on a, on our level in terms of, 
um, I can understand where he's going. Jordan Peterson okay. sometimes has a way of figure like it's almost like he's figuring out and processing his thoughts while he's talking mm-hmm. oh interesting. you know what i mean yeah sure where he's yeah, like kind of going good, down yeah. a rabbit hole where somebody asks a question and then all right. of a sudden you're talking about like like astrophysics and you're like how the hell did we get there <laughs> right right, right, right the right, meaning right, of right. life and then yeah. i think sam harris is a way of of staying on point okay a bit yeah that makes better. a lot of sense yeah, yeah at least yeah, from what i've seen sense. yeah no that makes a lot of sense it, it's Should a misunderstanding so so the one thing that jordan does is he attacks what what he calls postmodernism. sure and I don't know the argument. I, I was literally fighting with her today about this all day. <laughs> yeah. um, but but she's basically she's basically saying that he equates or or he uh, strawmans postmodernism and kind of like broadly brushes this term postmodernism across you know anything that he doesn't like. And she's like, well, yeah, you can do that. And, and it's actually mm-hmm. kind of ironic because the way he's using postmodernism is not the definition of postmodernism. And postmodernism is all about not using the definitions of things. So he's kind of in proxy being a postmodernist through it. So it, it's a very interesting, weird. The, the postmodern thing, my uh, sister Michelle. Right. Uh, God bless her soul. <laughs> she was in a cult. Right. Uh, <laughs> called Enlightenext. Mm-hmm. And. Mm-hmm. We all told her, well, I don't know if we told her to her face that she was in a cult when she was in it. Right. I mean, I, I, I didn't really call it a cult, to be honest. Like, sure. it was a spiritual organization she was in. And obviously, anytime somebody's really excited about something, they want to tell all their friends about it. Right. And sometimes it's, um, it is a cult <laughs> that they're, right. that they're right. talking about. It's actually about. a cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but, you know, there's no way to know it until you're, at, until you're in it. But now that this organization has been pulling apart, people that have, were in it, openly say oh like laugh oh, like, oh really? we were in wow. a cult we were in a cult yeah oh i didn't know that there's like a documentary on it now like everybody wow. is, is, is is saying like yeah we were in a cult <laughs> michelle right. says that she she admits that she was in a cult okay but their whole thing was but it's not like a 70s cult where they're like kidnapping kids no, and no, putting them no. on cunt. but one of the big things about this organization was that they would always um call out postmodernists and the cult would the cult would and oh, michelle so michelle would always oh my god matt like she like in a condescending way right like matt that that is so postmodern that is so postmodern oh, to say that so interesting you're, just, you're blanketing everything like you're 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 making judgments without actually thinking through it it's just such a postmodern view to look right. at it. and i can't think of the actual uh things but that that it would bring it up wow all the, all the time Oh, that's so interesting. And do we, what, should we get a definition of postmodernism? Maybe I'll, I'll look it up yeah, so w- we, we wiki don't screw it, wiki up. Yeah, wiki it, wiki um, it. Google uh, postmodern philosophy. So postmodern is also an art movement, and it, it's still similar, but. Postmodern philosophy. I mean, we could do. Or, or do postmodern. I mean, it's it's in there. There's art. Postmodernism is difficult to define. <laughs> is that like, and, but that's that kind of Kalen's point. It's like it's a broad brush because to define it would be to violate the postmodernist premise that no definite terms, boundaries, or absolute truths exist. Right. In this article, the term postmodernism will remain vague. That's like, wait, what are you reading? No, that was like postmodernist.com, <laughs> but it's the second thing that pops up. Here. Uh, Let me see if we can get a. Just go to postmodern.com and then. It's like the second or third sentence, and then you'll get like a kind of yeah, decent right. definition. Here, um, yeah, this is good because this is it's, there's a the Wikipedia is always a trusted source. Yeah, postmodern philosophy is a philosophical direction which is critical of certain foundational assumptions of Western philosophy, and especially of the 18th century Enlightenment. It emphasizes mm. the importance of, like John Locke, right? Yeah, it em- emphasizes the importance of power relationships, personalized. Personalization and discourse in the construction of truth and worldview. Postmodernists deny that any objective reality exists mm-hmm. and deny that there are objective moral values. And that's where it's like it gets a little weird. <laughs> for me. Yeah. For me at least. That's um, where the philosophy kind of right. breaks down for you. I wouldn't say it breaks down, but it, it's it's a little weird to say that. Like I don't know, but but you know, it it could be because of the structure that I was brought up in, right? The American the Americanism, the the sort of uh, Puritan work ethic that I was, I was. Uh, Puritans. You know the, the Puritan the work. You know the Puritan work ethic, right? Uh, no. Oh God, you got to look that up. I'm man. Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that different? Puritanism. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I. This is like the the Pilgrims and the. 
Indian. So yeah, so the Puritan work ethic is basically um, uh, he does not he who does not work does not eat. Yeah, so, exactly. That's yeah, the way it yeah, should yeah. be. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no yeah. but I don't know if anybody, uh, even like conservatives, I don't think believe that. Um, I mean, to 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 an extent, but they. And what is a conservative too? Like, what does that even mean? Oh, now we're getting real postmodern. No, no. That, it, yeah. It, so okay. I, it's, it, no, it's not yeah, postmodern. No. It's how do you define a conservative? It's uh, how Wikipedia, our uh, our trusted source. Yeah. Uh, how Wikipedia would define that as someone that wants to maintain the status quo or the tradition uh, in which we live. Conservation. Conservation. Yeah, you're you're conserving the culture that we live in now. Why do you think? Uh, we talk a lot about politics. Sure. And I, I think and do we even really know what we're talking about? That's Probably a, I mean, not. That's what, that's what we talk about a lot is how right. we don't really know if what right. we're talking about is actually. Right. Because a lot of it's like comes from the gut. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, what and and what gut, the hell is that? That's my nothing. gut changes. Like your right. beliefs change. Sure. Um, at, why do you think? Because like in, in our group, in our friendship group, we talk about. So we have a group of friends that we, we've got a messenger chat and, and we've been friends in real life since like kindergarten. And we, we continue some, some pretty heavy conversations, sure. but always in like kind of a light manner and was course, always yeah. in like a meme joking way. Right. Um, but we're able to kind of throw out some pretty, uh, unpopular opinions and talk about at or, least or straight up fucked up or problematic fucked or, up opinion. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Like we say some fucked up shit in that thread right. that outside of it probably wouldn't be PC. Wouldn't be, I mean, it, yeah, I mean correct at all. Yeah. We, I, we'd it, all lose our jobs. Yes. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> that thread yeah. got out there. Yeah. Absolutely. We'd be fucked. Yeah. Um, but cause it, it helps you to explore these ideas that otherwise nobody else would want to talk about. Right. But why do you think that when we can't have these, I mean, we're, we're safe with each other. We know that we don't. Yeah, because we know each our other. intentions. Right, right. Our intentions are maybe not pure. <laughs> I don't think any of us are pure. Yeah, but we. But our intentions are good, yeah. and we 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 hope the best for people. We yeah. want the best outcome for sure. Our friends and our family. Sure. And like yeah, like our country, and you know, like I don't want to no. sound too. Yeah, and yeah, th- we do want the best for our country. Yeah. And we want the best for. Um, for those around us. And I think if we were ever presented with any sort of fact that we would immediately jump on anything that told us to think, Hey, this is an amazing ideology and, and it's going to help a bunch of people. Like we would, of course we would jump. Absolutely. On yeah. We're, we're not, we're not animals. Well, we're assholes, but we're yeah, not, yeah, we're not idiots. Yeah, yeah, I guess. yeah, exactly. So with all, all this talk about politics, mm-hmm. politics has, has taken over, uh, the media, and culture, and, and yes. in, in a way that I don't think we've ever seen in in no. our lives. I, I I think it's also taken over religion. To be honest, I, I think it's the new religion. The new religion yeah. is if you're right or left concerned. Right. I mean, actually, when you look at Trump, Trump really didn't talk much about religion. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and it's very yeah. one-sided. So here's the thing: with with all this talk, um, th- there's a segment that that I wanted to bring up, mm-hmm. and it's called "What's the Rock been up to." <laughs> is this real? <laughs> <laughs> this is a real segment. This is the first time I've done this segment. Oh my god! I was gonna do it the past two, and it just didn't feel right. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, he's out. Just is out. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this a good song? All right, so oh, it's so good, Matt. It's so good. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Uh-huh. So, so what's the rock been up to? I don't know if you know if you've been uh-huh. keeping up with the podcast, but I, listen, I, I heard, know. I heard, I heard you had problematic thoughts about the rock. No, that's not it. That's not it. Don't, <laughs> come on, what? Get out of here. No, they, I. My thing. Uh, every you love any, the Rock. Anybody who watches the show knows that oh. my big goal, my big stretch goal, is to get the Rock in right. that chair. Right. I, I want to interview the Rock right. on this podcast, um, and it's it's it, it's been a long road, and he hasn't <laughs> returned my phone calls yet. So it's been tough, but I'm working on it. Right. But anyway, the Rock made the news this week. Mm-hmm. Um, in a big way, right? And uh, according to the Federal <laughs> Election Committee record uh, records, a campaign committee has been formed called Run the Rock 2020, uh-huh. an attempt to make America rock again. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, the problem is, I looked into this. This story made like front page; it was all over the place. Right. But it was just some guy in like North Carolina <laughs> that decided to open it up, and the Rock had right, nothing to right. do with it. Um, but that's not to say that the rock hasn't talked about this in the past on, on one of your posts about 
being president. How real was that? The idea of me being president one day has become a legit thing to some people. And if it is a overwhelming, <laughs> positive, strong, we want you to run for president. And if I felt that I can step up to the plate and become a tremendous leader and make a real difference and make change, mm. I would do it. Oh, shit. <laughs> is that amazing? It's incredible. I yeah. mean... Um, it's incredible. If The Rock... He obviously, like, you, from that answer, like, it's pretty obvious that this guy uh, sees the potential sure. to, to run sure. for president. But uh, he's also humble. I mean, he does he know that he can... Yeah. I think what really, and almost in a, in a case like Trump as well, right. it's when a person like that is in office, mm -hmm. like, if The Rock becomes president, sure, uh, it's more so about the people around him. He's more of a symbol... And he, there's no way that he's really going to understand the policy and know the, the implications of said policy. Sure, but I think that's, um, honestly, I think that's what makes a good, not to make it sound, I think that's what makes a good leader. I was going to say manager, but uh, I think that right. that's what makes a good uh, leader. It's it's someone who inspires people. I mean, and, and also kind of blocks them from the bullshit. Yeah. You know, I, you, you know let what? people sort of. He's humble, man. <laughs> he, he's a humble guy. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I I'm a big rock fan. I, I know you are. I'm a big rock fan. <laughs> We've been watching uh Natalie and I have been watching like old rock videos and uh not the music. his old wrestling videos. Not the music. Yeah. Can you Yeah, can you smell what the rock is cooking? No. We might have No, I know. I was making a joke. Oh. Not like rock music. Oh, rock music. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. you know like that old song that he's a part of? Oh. Is uh can you smell what the rock is? Oh, of course. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, uh, this is gonna sound like I'm like obsessed with the Rock. You are, but the Rock has. I love the Rock. I think he's I like amazing. if anybody would know about it, it would be you. But the Rock's got a. Uh, the Rock's got an app. Okay. It's called no, the, you told me about this. It's called, yeah. the, it's called the Rock Clock, and <laughs> I think this is gonna be also like a an is ongoing. Is he paying thing. you for the sponsor? No, I wish. <laughs> Fuck. If he was paying me, I would. I just get him on the podcast. <laughs> right. Um. So the great this the great thing about this app mm -hmm. is that they have all these great alarms. Right. So Is this the Miracle Morning too? Is this This is no, this is different than the <laughs> But do you use it for the Miracle Morning? I don't know. Yeah. The thing is that the, the app is kind of tough. It doesn't really totally integrate with your your iPad, but you have to like leave <laughs> with your, your schedule. You have to like leave the You got to smell sound. what the rock is cooking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny you say that. <laughs> all right, so here, you wait, you just listen to some of this shit. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. Yeah, that's what the rock just said. Open your eyes up. Get your candy ass out of bed. Uh, this, is, so this, good. Here's this, one. Is, this is Matt's Miracle Morning. Yeah, yeah. Listen, here's, here's one more. Bring it. <laughs> 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 this is Wayne Johnson, and I've approved this message. <laughs> it's taking everything in me not to play every single one. <laughs> I want to save some for future episodes. The Rock is... He's like a meme, but... You can't keep... But you don't hate it. No, he's... You, like, actually like yeah, it. you actually support him. Yeah. Because I think he's a good guy. You, you gotta be careful with the uh, your lozenge. Cause it's like, Can you hear the popping? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I think The Rock should show respect for. <laughs> well, here's the for a documentarian that has a document, a document out on there. the on the net, <laughs> on the net, on Flicks. the Netflix. It's tough. There's going to be a lot of challenges to actually getting The Rock on the show. Mm -hmm. I think the first is uh, I wouldn't want to jump right into it. Right. Like, say if I got The Rock's phone number. Right. You know what I mean? That would be sure. a huge breakthrough in this development. Right. But I don't think I would want to act on that right away. I don't want to run out there and, and give him a call because then he's going to block my number really quick and then I'm never going right. to be able to get a hold of right. him. Right. You got to play cool. So it's like, how do I... You're back to dating. You're back to dating. It is like dating. Yeah. If there was an app and it was like Tinder, but it was just The Rock, right. I just <laughs> swipe right on The Rock all day. I would keep swiping right. But I need to figure out a way. Like, how can I appeal to... How can I add value to The Rock? And, and you know what? Maybe if he is running for president, this is a way for him to speak with the people. If he's the people's uh, champ, this is a way right. for him. And that's one way 
that it could add value. But I, that's not my pitch. That's not like, hey, right, Rock, right, right, hey, right, Rock, right, right, right. do an interview because yeah. a thousand other people want you on their podcast as well. What right, makes right, mine right. different? L- luckily, he's going to listen to this one. Luckily, so. yeah, this, this might be the one. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's um, finding some people that are close to him. And right. I think... And stalking them. And, and stalk them and then right. just wait in the bushes. Right. And then pounce them. Right. Cut their skin off their face. That's what I Put would think. Put the skin on my face. And pretend you're them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And then the rock would is be Is he surprised. married? Maybe um, you can be his wife. See, this is how you know I, I don't actually stalk the rock. I don't know if he's married. I think he is. But I think, and I think he has kids. But apparently, somebody told me recently that he really loves his kids. Says who? <laughs> I don't know why that was who even. Who the a, fuck loves even, their kid? Yeah, that's even, so weird. I don't even know why that, that was like so a. So weird. I don't even know that was a point that I made. They're like, yeah, he really loves his kid. Let's not talk about my father. Yeah, you know what? The only thing is better than a snow dad. No, the only thing worse than a snow dad. How does it go? You said I'm I, just. I'm just gonna say no. I dad. watched Jack Frost. I'm a, no dad. No dad. Because that's what I have. Yeah, something like that. No, I have. I have a stepdad, but he's. He's a um, bit of an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> Apple doesn't far, <laughs> fall far from the step tree. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm glad to have you on the show now because this is my last episode. Literally before this, Ever. No, this no. desk, tomorrow morning, I'm going to break it apart. And you're going to give it to Travis Biggs with a bunch of yep. uh, beer my, uh, stains on it. Basically, my brother-in-law. Gonna, yeah. Oh, they, they're like really in love. They've been, yeah, they've been together for like seven years, I think. Holy Six shit. years, seven years. Yeah. How old is your, how old is she? Megan? Yeah. Man. Who knows? <laughs> right. She's like uh, four years younger than me. So oh, she's, okay. She's like 26. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Ish. Nice. I should know my siblings' birthdays. I nah, just want to make this be nah. clear because I think people- Well, you have 1,400 siblings. Yeah. Right? See? It's like 300. No, you have 300 siblings. I have s- six brothers and sisters. Um, and I, so just to be clear- I don't know all the birthdays. <laughs> Just to be clear, I am an asshole. It's hard to keep track of all. Well, their their ages change every year, so it's right, really hard to right, keep up. Right? Yeah, that's a hard one. Well, you know what we didn't what we didn't talk about yet is your story. Th- that's what this show is about. It's about people's oh, past motivation, motivation. Yeah, not necessarily motivation, mm-hmm. inspiration. <laughs> right, right, right. right. When did you first get into programming? I was basically I was talking to my buddy Zach. Weston. Imagine a gorilla with sideburns. <laughs> right. and you've got Zach Weston. <laughs> um, so yeah. wait, so so he's in. He's at Bloomsburg, and and he's doing yeah. um, information security. Was it cyber security? Cyber security, yeah. And, yeah. and and involving a lot of programming. And he thinks that you, yeah. this you may actually like this. As of well. course, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the next day I went to the to the library. I bought a a book. Uh, it was Python learning learning Python through gaming or something like that and I started looking for IT jobs because I knew it would be a very difficult for me to uh, go into a programming job when I had no programming experience obviously but I, I wanted to get sort of you know uh, next to it so I luckily got this job at Chromosol, um in North Brunswick I went to Rutgers so it's New Brunswick North Brunswick is right there and I didn't do my job, so instead what I did was I was like essentially automating things, and mm. when you're in IT, basically what you're doing is you're, you know, replacing printer cartridges fixing and fixing problems. shit, yeah. yeah, it's it's a bunch of bullshit, but I, I would kind of slack off, but the thing is, what I would do is I would wind up, uh, you know, talking to these scientists and like, what do you want automated? And these people would spend, these people, uh, these scientists would spend three days on this thing in which they were importing thing into an Excel document from a access document. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, an access database is a kind of a crappy Microsoft database. Um, so yeah, so I, I decided like, yeah, I'm gonna automate it for you. And so it took a 25 hour process and it, it reduced it to seconds. Wow. Yeah. And through that, I got that experience, and then I started working for Rutgers directly with their enterprise uh, systems and Appli- enterprise systems and application services. I forget. Basically, I, I wrote their undergraduate admissions application, and that's really where I started to learn. I think it's really funny that you wrote their undergraduate a- a- application and you didn't graduate. <laughs> I didn't graduate. No, no, yeah, I didn't graduate. Not only did I not graduate, but like. 
that year that I wrote that, I ran out of funding for it. So I was writing uh, mm-hmm. the software in which uh, people would, you know, sign up to go to this school. And I didn't, not only did I not go to this school, like they kind of didn't kick me out, but mm-hmm. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> they kicked you out. <laughs> they kicked me out. They they said, if you're not going to pay, then yeah, you should yeah. probably go. Right. But, yeah. but, but they kept me on. But the, the biggest thing was, um, I had the most amazing mentor. I had somebody that was, it was using, it was a framework called Dojo. He didn't give a shit what the language was. He gave a shit about writing really good quality. He wanted to make a really quality product and he sort of uh, put that on me. And, and so he, he created the architecture, the, the, Mm -hmm. the framework. And it was, it was really incredible that I, that is my first exposure to this language that was kind of, poo pooed about and and mm-hmm. just like poo pooed. Who the Poo-poo. fuck says that? <laughs> um, but but you know it's a shitty language. It's it's gross. Oh, you you're a web program. It's very stigmatized. And this person actually provided a framework in which I could learn. But I think there's there's probably part of that story that's a little bit missing. Is is when you got that first book? Did you kind of because I know you were talking about this working at Rite Aid where you're just spending any spare minute you have reading and 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 learning mm. programming and and this is something from the very beginning that connected with you and you really enjoyed the process yeah. of learning it yeah and, and to this day it's something that you still I deeply love enjoy yeah. i still deeply enjoy it. yeah I, I mean so what was it about like so reading that book is like when you're in the book like it just clicked right away or i, I feel like because it's funny you think about today mm. and how people learn uh, programming right. and you have all these amazing websites and classes and schools that help you understand programming and they gamify it and they do all this stuff to make it right. so easy and and for people who maybe should never be programmers can sure. at least start to understand and learn it yeah. you're reading which a, i think is a good thing yeah yeah totally yeah you're reading out of a textbook about how to learn how to code sure how does that actually stick with you and and why does it stick i don't know it's it's challenging it's fun it's uh, you're always learning i don't know i don't know i i don't have mm-hmm. a really good response to it but i think indulging in it because you think it's going to make you money is possibly a good thing <laughs> <laughs> i was looking at your face yeah. i was like i I know where he's going with this. I know he's going to say that it's yeah. it's it's not the right course. And then, but I, I do understand what you mean. Sure. But I I also encourage people very much so that when you're just getting started out, uh, y- you need to make money. I don't think you should do anything immoral. I don't think you should bend mm-hmm. your 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 moral compass right. to make money. I don't think that you should like if you're a filmmaker, you should start doing porn if that's not something that morally suits you. I gave room in there for people who morally have think it's okay. Porn? No, I have not done porn. I think people should understand the importance of making money early on from either their art or their work or whatever they're, they're passionate about, whatever they, mm. their life's focus is, because that is going to lead them down a path. Hopefully, if, they're, if they have the right guidance and the right people steering them in the right direction and, and supporting them, that they can both do something that they love get paid for it and actually positively impact other people around them. Because I think, I think all three of those things are important. I think the, the positive impact in helping and contributing is the one that's the most difficult to get to. Sure. Like, and, and I was certainly fulfilled and happy doing freelance film work and, and making weddings and, and doing all these, these videos. I was making sure. money. I was paying down my debt and, uh, I did really enjoy what I was doing. I liked it. And minimalism was hard for you, right? Like that sucked. I mean, you weren't yeah, right. being paid. Yeah, I, but I, I think that's another story. But that's also a balance of like minimalism was a project where I was like, now I can contribute. Um, mm. And this was an evolution. And you for felt me. that the whole time? Uh, no, no, not at all. No. Yeah. I, I, but that, that's this is the diving into a big project, which is, is something that you're you're familiar with. When you dive into a big project, it sucks. It sucks. It's the worst, yeah. but it's the best. It's like a relationship. I love it, but I hate it. I love right, it, but I hate right, it. Right. Um, because you start the project and everything's great. Everything's great. Yeah. You're excited. 
you like that that first phone call or whatever, or the first meeting you have, and you're like, "This is great. Let's do this. I'm so excited about it. I'm ready to go." Um, for me, and, and for most people, I would say doubt starts to creep in because usually yep. when you say, "Let's do the project," you're not getting into the actual work in the yep. next day. Yep. It takes a couple of weeks or m- months, whatever, months, until you years actually for me years, yeah, I mean, until you actually yeah. get into the project. We we had decided that uh, this was something worth pursuing it was something that that we all wanted to make and and go in on yeah but we didn't realize what it would take to put it all together and you don't i think I, nobody ever yeah. really knows what it's yeah. going to take and and you, i don't think you can stop i think one of the the biggest things and the best things that i ever did and something that you're experiencing now with yeah. your partner kevin yeah. is that you need people to partner with to, yeah. to push you because i don't think I think you can only do so much. Hey, can I quote an African proverb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go I, ahead. Go I, ahead. I did a... Do you um, remember it? Yeah. Do you absolutely. remember yeah, it? Yeah, it's my quote, All man. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. It's your quote? It's my quote that I use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's a, an African proverb mm, mm-hmm. uh, that says, you go, go fast alone, but you go far together. <laughs> I did this. Uh, this is actually this the, is the last episode, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last, this episode, is the last episode of minimalism, <laughs> a documentary about the podcast. We uh, this was like actually at the premiere of minimalism. I had all my friends come out and support me. It was great. And then we we flew, even Alex, yeah, Mr. even Military. Alex came out. Yeah. Mr. Military, Mr. Bomb yeah. Squad. Right. Uh, God love Alex. Um, so we have this this screening. It's the first screening ever. We have five hundred people. Uh, come out to see the film. It was a sold out crowd. It was amazing. It it was unbelievable to be there mm. uh, and to experience that my first screening ever. And then there's a Q and A afterwards. And Josh and Ryan from the Minimalists have their podcast, and I'm a guest on the podcast. And then I decide to, uh, well, we were, somebody asked a question, and then I felt it relevant. We were talking about the struggles uh, of the film, and I pull out this African proverb out of my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the laughter <laughs> but but uh from what i'm told afterwards is my entire row of family and friends just start dying laughing after yeah. i espouse this african proverb yeah. because they know matt's never been to africa <laughs> he's never been close to africa right. what did his like since when did he learn african proverbs <laughs> it was like I, I just like googled interestingquotes.com i gotta say though I think the rest of the crowd was into it because they don't know who I am. And I think if anything, it taught me that you can get away with a lot. This is the only way we could possibly end this episode because I feel like uh, Jesse uh, is not willing to answer my question for the second time. (laughs) So the problem was that I looked over at my recording device and it's when I went to stop it, it said card full. Mm. So at this point, I have no idea where our conversation was cut off. It was probably a good thing that it was cut off halfway through because we went on <laughs> went on some crazy shit. But I just want to say, Jesse, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for being a good friend. And thanks for being my last episode here in Brooklyn. Thanks for um, being amazing, Matthew. Jesse, thanks for coming on. 